Hormones really shouldn't be addressed separately. We want to consider them holistically. I broke them apart here to help you understand how each one of these plays a role in our skin, but really they work together. Welcome to the Woman's Doctor Podcast, helping empower women to embrace their body and soul's full potential. I'm your host, Dr. Trevor Cates, and after 22 years of working with patients, I found the answers to our health struggles are much deeper than most people realize. To help explore this, I'm interviewing colleagues and other wellness experts to get to the root cause so women can realize their true beauty and be informed decision makers for themselves and their loved ones. Did you know that skin is your largest organ and it accounts for 15% of your body weight? So our skin is important and it's right on the surface of our bodies. So I call it our magic mirror because it gives us great clues about our overall health. And that includes our hormones. And as women, hormones are so important. They impact all aspects of our health, including our skin. And since our skin is right there for us to look at, why don't we talk about how our hormones might be out of balance and what our skin might be trying to tell us. So I want to remind you, first of all, that it's important to think about what you're putting on your skin and that there actually are things that you could be putting on your skin that could be throwing your hormones off. So I want to talk with you about that first, and then I'll talk about individual hormones, whether they're high or low and how they impact our health. So welcome to the woman's doctor podcast. I'm Dr. Trevor Cates, your host. I'm doing this podcast solo to dive into what I know so much about skin and hormones. So these chemicals that we put on our skin and our personal care products, unfortunately, they're just not well regulated in places like in Europe, they've banned over a thousand ingredients and in personal care products, but in the United States, there have only been about 11 ingredients banned. And with all the products that we use on our skin, it's important to pay attention to what we put on because you have to remember products don't just sit on the surface of our skin. They can get absorbed into our bloodstream. Just like we would put hormone creams on our skin or nicotine patches. We use medications and our skin on our skin as a route of administration. So of course, what we put on our skin matters. So there's a group of chemicals called endocrine disrupting chemicals. These endocrine disrupting chemicals are hormone disrupting chemicals. And when we use them in personal care products, they can actually absorb into our circulation and get into our bodies. Some even store up in tissues while our body is pretty good at eliminating some of these some of these stay and they don't come out of our bodies very easily. So it's really important to think about what we're putting on our skin. These endocrine disrupting chemicals, what happens is they can bind to hormone receptors in our bodies and it really messes up the way they function. So our body might think that we have all these hormones when in fact, they're actually toxins. So then it gives these feedback mechanisms within our body to either turn off or turn on pathways. So this is why endocrine disrupting chemicals have been linked to so many health problems like fertility issues, early puberty issues around menopause problems with breast cancer, prostate cancer, and so many other health issues, even problems with thyroid weight. Think about all the ways that our hormones impact our health from our thyroid hormones and our metabolism to our adrenals and stress to our sleep hormones like melatonin, our appetite hormones like leptin, ghrelin, our sex hormones, thyroid, adrenal. Oh my gosh, there's so many. So what we want to do is we want to reduce our exposure to these. And of course, I'll talk more about this in other episodes of the woman's doctor podcast, but I wanted to 
to bring this up first before I talk about individual hormones, because this is one of the most important things we can do is start looking at the ways we're exposed to these and reduce our exposure. And that means in our water, our food, our personal care products, and also in our homes. So doing things like filtering your water, eating organic, choosing natural, truly natural skincare products like the spa doctor products, and looking at things that you use in your home. All of these are super important, but remember whatever we do, we want to look at balance for our hormones because that is what is so crucial to help our health and our skin. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these hormones. Estrogen is the first one I want to talk about, and I'm going to talk about these as when they're low and when they're high. So when estrogen is low, when we're not, when our body is not making enough estrogen, our skin tends to be drier and less elastic and also a little bit more fragile. Now this can happen during times like, um, when a woman is, um, you know, right after pregnancy or right around menopause, when our estrogen tends to drop. So to help us with our estrogen and kind of support that we can eat certain foods that are contain phytoestrogens like flax seeds, sesame seeds, non-GMO soy, even rhubarb have been, has been shown to help support estrogen levels naturally. Also, another tip is to manage your stress because ongoing stress suppresses our estrogen production. And that includes in young women. So stress management is super important. The third tip on this on low estrogen is around certain supplements that can actually help increase estrogen product production. And I talk about more of these in my book, natural beauty reset that's coming out in September, but vitamin D three is one of those high estrogen is on the flip side of estrogen. So these hormones, all they change throughout our lives. And so high estrogen actually can happen during pregnancy and, and but like low estrogen often happens after pregnancy, but higher estrogen often happens during pregnancy or when a woman is on birth control pills or other uh, types of, of um, estrogen therapies. So they can make more women more prone to melasma. Now that is the, oftentimes you'll see it along the cheeks. It's sometimes called the mask of pregnancy because it's so common in pregnant women where there's this little bit of pigmentation across the cheeks. So what we want to do is support estrogen metabolism. So that means we want to help support our bodies and our natural ability to break down estrogen. So the levels don't accumulate. So you might want to consider herbs like maca that can help balance estrogen and progesterone, especially in perimenopausal or, or postmenopausal women. Let's move on to the next hormone and that's androgens. Testosterone, when it's high, stimulates sebum producing glands, which are actually important for protecting our skin with natural oils. But the problem is too much can lead to acne. So age related hormonal changes like puberty and menopause can actually affect as, uh, testosterone and its metabolism, that breaking down of it. So here are some tips. If you're concerned that maybe your androgens are a little bit on the high side. So take, you might want to talk to your doctor or your healthcare provider about taking supplements like saw palmetto zinc and vitamin D because they can help balance androgen levels. Also, there's a nutrient called chromium that helps to, it seems to help lower testosterone, that free testosterone. And it's known for its blood sugar balancing effects, which is particularly beneficial for women with PCOS. If you don't know what that is, it's a common condition, a hormonal imbalance in women that I think is oftentimes underdiagnosed, but if you have it, you know who you are. Low androgens, on the other hand, can lead to thinning and dry skin, as well as loss of the muscles in the face. So when we lose our testosterone levels, when our androgen levels drop, it can cause muscle wasting. So that means we do have muscles in the face too. So that muscles, muscles that are under your skin, kind of holding it up 
when we're younger, as we get older and our androgen levels start to drop, we can start to lose that muscle tone in our face, what can lead to more of the sagging skin that we see. So anyone with low levels, um, you can have your levels of hormones tested. That's one of the best ways and to work with a healthcare provider who specializes in hormones, like a naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctor who specializes in hormones. They could test your levels of things like DHEA and testosterone. So you might benefit from certain supplements or maybe even bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. We'll talk more about that on another episode. Let's dive into thyroid. So thyroid is really interesting because when our thyroid, it's, it's our, it helps with metabolism. And when it's not functioning well, when it's underactive or hypothyroidism, it could be one of the, one of the first warning signs of this can actually be on our skin, dry or coarse complexion, and also reduced ability to sweat. But the flip side of that, an overactive thyroid or hyperthyroid, someone might experience oilier or more acne prone skin. So with thyroid, what we want to do is we want to create balance. And so the thyroid needs support with certain nutrients like iodine. So we might want to consider supporting with supplements like zinc, selenium, iodine, or tyrosine, which, um, all of those, you could talk to your doctor about, especially if they do more of a functional medicine or naturopathic approach, you could talk to them about nutritional support for your thyroid. If you think that's what's going on again, it's always best to test rather than guess. So it's good. It's really easy to test for thyroid. You can ask your doctor for a full thyroid panel, which includes, they're not going to necessarily know what you mean by that. So let's talk about what that is. A TSH, free T3, free T4, as well as thyroid antibodies. Now, some other doctors will throw in other tests like reverse T3, but those are the basic ones that you want to talk to your doctor about. For for low thyroid, you also might want to consider a thyroid medication or a natural desiccated thyroid is another option. But again, talk to your doctor about this. This is not something you want to do on your own. I just want you to be empowered with information. So you know, what's available for you. Also there's high cortisol, our adrenal function. So we could have low adrenal function, low cortisol or high cortisol. When it comes to skin, the biggest issue around our adrenal cortisol is that we, if it's high, that can increase inflammation. It can also increase sebum production in the skin. So that means it can trigger acne, atopic dermatitis or eczema, rosacea, and many other skin issues, especially those more inflammatory skin issues. Definitely. That's been one of my issues in the past. I have a history of a lot of eczema and allergic types of skin issues. I've also had my history with, with acne as well. So I get it. Rosacea, I've, I've had it just about all of it, but one of the things that we want to think about these is how do we balance our hormones, including cortisol. So since cortisol is our stress, one of our stress hormones, one of the biggest things we can do is around stress management practices. If you're not familiar with how to do stress management practices, you could just start with some breath work, try a yoga class, get out and do go into nature and go on a walk. And I've got lots of ideas in both my book, clean skin from within, which is now available. It's, it's been available for the last five years. And also my upcoming book, natural beauty reset, which is coming out in September, but you can also to help with your adrenals. There are supplements as well that can help, but there, there are groups of, um, of herbs and nutrients and things that can help with supporting your adrenals. One of my favorites is ashwagandha. And we actually have a, a supplement that we sell at the spa doctor called stress adapt because, and it's ashwagandha because it's such a powerful herb and adaptogen. So those are some of the, the hormones that are involved with your skin. Now, hormones uh, really shouldn't be addressed separately. We want to consider them holistically. I broke them apart here to help you understand how each one of these plays a role in our skin, but really they work together. And our answers of, of balancing these go beyond just some dietary changes and supplements it really goes back into testing, really understanding what's going on. So there's a lot more to learn about that. So 
I want you to make sure that you're going to check out my hormone docu series. It's hormones, health, and harmony. It's a nine part documentary series. You can find all about it and all about balancing hormones at hormoneseries.com. So I hope you'll check out the docu-series so that you can learn all about your hormones and how not only will they impact your skin, but your overall health and what you could do about it. I've interviewed over 50 experts for this series. So you won't just hear from me here. You'll hear from a lot of other people. You hear their personal stories and how they overcame the, their own pro- problems as well as helping their patients and their clients. So check it out at hormoneseries.com. And I'll see you next time on the woman's doctor podcast. Thank you for listening to the woman's doctor podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to share it with the women in your life and to learn all about balancing hormones. Join us for the hormones, health and harmony docuseries at the woman's doctor.com.